The Galactic Federation fleet shattered around them as Captain Zack stared at the comm panel in panic-stricken horror, screaming, No one knows what to do! Just call the damn humans! The Korgrath had struck without warning. Their weapons tore through the Galactic Federation's defenses, like claws through flesh. Captain Zax watched his crew die as consoles exploded and bulkheads collapsed. Alarms blared. The stench of melted polymer and charred meat filled the air. Zax had minutes at most before those bloodthirsty savages boarded his crippled ship. His tentacles flew over the comm panel, sending a frantic distress signal on all frequencies. This is Captain Zax of the GFS Intrepid, requesting immediate assistance from any ship in range. We are under attack by Korgrath forces. Crew decimated, supplies low, need immediate evac and support. If any humans hear this, please help us. Zax didn't know much about the strange bipedal race called humans. Few in the Federation did, but if the scattered rumors were true, humans were the galaxy's most fearless warriors, the only ones crazy enough to fight the Korgrath head-on. Humanity's response came in less than 60 seconds. This is Lieutenant Commander Nate Sullivan of the UNSC 112th Exoplanetary Assault Battalion. We are armed and inbound to your coordinates. ETA, 15 minutes. Hold tight, Captain. The Space Marines are on our way. Zax breathed a shuddering sigh. The Space Marines, humanity's elite soldiers, whispered of only in awed tones by shell-shocked veterans. Maybe his crew had a chance. But even if the humans arrived in time, how could one small team hope prevail against a massive Korgrath war fleet? Zack shook his head. It didn't matter, they had to prevail. If the Korgrath seized the Intrepid's quantum core and decoded the Federation's subspace network, they could cripple interstellar commerce and isolate entire systems for conquest. Billions would die or be enslaved. No, thought Zax grimly as the first Korgrath boarding pods slammed into the hull. The humans had to succeed, or the Korgrath would feast on the ashes of the galaxy itself. The GFS Intrepid hung in space dock as repair drones scurried over its battered hull. Nate and his space marines took the temporary pause in the fighting as an opportunity to learn more about their alien allies. Captain Zax led them on a tour of the massive ship, his tentacles gesturing excitedly as he showed off the Intrepid's advanced tech. This is our quantum computing core, Zack said, pointing to a glowing sphere that pulsed with iridescent light. It can perform trillions of calculations per second and coordinate fleet movements across entire sectors. Nate leaned in for a closer look, genuinely impressed. Amazing. Our AIs are pretty sophisticated, but nothing like this. As they continued through the ship, Nate noticed the incredible diversity among the crew. Dozens of alien species worked side by side at control stations and in engineering bays. Some had multiple limbs, others glided on anti-grav pods. The Federation encompasses hundreds of worlds, Zax explained with pride. Our unity is our greatest strength. But as they entered the command deck, that unity seemed to waver. A group of alien leaders in ornate uniforms regarded the human marines with wary eyes. Nate could sense the tension crackling in the air. Are you sure it's wise to allow these humans free reign of the ship? A blue-skinned admiral asked Zax. Their kind has a reputation for violence and aggression. Nate stepped forward, meeting the admiral's gaze. With respect, sir, it's that same warrior spirit that allowed us to save your crew from the Korgrath. We're here as allies, not threats. The admiral clicked his mandibles doubtfully, but said nothing more. Zax hurried to smooth over the awkward moment. The humans have proven themselves as valiant fighters and friends. We're grateful for their aid. As they left the command deck, Nate's wrist comm pinged with an incoming alert. He glanced down at the message, his face hardening. What is it? Zax asked. Intelligence report. The Korgrath are massing for an attack on Outpost Zeta-9. If that station falls, they'll have a foothold to strike deeper into Federation space. Nate made his decision in an instant. My team will reinforce the outpost's garrison. We'll dig in and hold the line. Zax blinked his eye stalks. Lieutenant, Zeta-9 is on the far edge of Federation space. If the Korgrath break through, your squad could be cut off. The risk is necessary, Nate finished firmly. 
The Korgrath have to be stopped here and now before they rampage across a dozen worlds. As drop pods carried the Space Marines down to the barren plain surrounding Outpost Zeta-9, Nate saw his own doubts reflected in the eyes of his second-in-command, Sergeant Jack Harper. Hell of a thing, Harper muttered, checking the charge on his plasma rifle. Trusting our lives to a bunch of alien bug-eyed weirdos. Nate clapped him on the armoured shoulder. They're scared of us, Jack, of what we can do. Up to us to show them we're on the same side. Only way this coalition works is if we build some trust. Prove our worth through action. Harper gave a sharp nod. Then the shrill whine of dropship engines filled the air, and the first artillery strikes shook the ground. The Korgrath had arrived. Nate led his marines in a charge across the cratered hellscape, their battle cries joining the cacophony of a dozen alien warshouts. Bolts of searing energy crisscrossed the battlefield as the human soldiers fought alongside the outpost's defenders. Nate dove into a trench beside a wounded Thaxian, its purple ichor oozing from a wound in its thorax. The creature's mandibles clacked a noise of distress. Nate ripped a med patch from his combat harness and slapped it over the damage. Easy there, buddy, I got you. We'll get you patched up. All around them the tide of Korgrath warriors pressed in, relentless, heedless of casualties. The air stank of ozone and blood. Nate laid down a withering hail of suppressing fire, his weapon bucking against his shoulder. Beside him, the Thaxian struggled upright and rejoined the fight. The battle raged on, a marathon of carnage and courage as human and alien fought as one against the Korgrath onslaught. Slowly, painfully, Nate and his allies forced the enemy back. But he knew this was only the beginning. The Korgrath would regroup and return. The war for the Federation's survival had only just begun. The acrid smoke of battle still lingered in the air when Admiral Zora strode across the scarred ground of Outpost Zeta-9. Her crisp uniform and polished carapace stood in stark contrast to the weary, soot-stained defenders. She approached Nate with a sense of purpose, her compound eyes glinting. Lieutenant Commander Sullivan, a word if you please. Nate fell into step beside her, curiosity piqued by the Admiral's presence on the front lines. What can I do for you, ma'am? Zora gestured to the ruins around them. You and your Marines fought bravely today. The Federation owes you a great debt, but I fear our struggle has only just begun. She produced a hollow projector from her belt, activating it with a deft flick of her claws. An image sprang to life, a pulsing fractured crystal that seemed to writhe with an inner darkness. Intelligence has discovered the source of the Korgrath's sudden aggression. They unearthed this artifact on a remote world beyond the fringe. It's imbued them with immense power and a hunger for conquest. As long as it exists, the Korgrath will never stop until the galaxy burns. Nate studied the projection, a cold knot of dread forming in his gut. What do you need us to do? Zora fixed him with a piercing gaze. I need your team for a covert mission. Infiltrate the heart of Korgrath space. Find this artifact and destroy it. It's the only way to end this war. Nate let out a slow breath. The Admiral was asking a hell of a thing, to plunge headlong into the lion's den with no backup and no extraction. But he knew she was right. This was their chance to prove, once and for all, that humanity belonged on the galactic stage. We'll need to train, learn their language, their customs, find some way to slip in undetected. Zora nodded. The Federation will provide everything you need. Technology, intelligence, resources. This mission cannot fail, Lieutenant. The fate of billions hangs in the balance. Nate thought of the soldiers under his command, the sacrifices they'd made, the battles they'd won. He squared his shoulders, resolve hardening in his chest. We'll get it done, Admiral, whatever it takes. The Space Marines spent the next week in gruelling preparation. Miner drilled them mercilessly in the guttural croaks and hisses of the Korgrath tongue, while Jack schooled them in the art of stealth and infiltration. They pored over every scrap of intel the Federation could gather, studying Korgrath hierarchy and troop movements. And the gear Zora provided. Nate had to admit it was beyond anything he'd ever seen. 
active camouflage bodysuits that could adapt to any environment, microscopic drones for surveillance and sabotage, weapons that could punch through the toughest Korgrath armor like it was paper. But Tech alone wouldn't win this fight. That would come down to grit and guts and the unbreakable bond of the Marines. On the eve of the mission, Nate gathered his team in the temporary barracks they'd been granted aboard Zora's flagship. He looked into the eyes of each man and woman, seeing the same fire that had carried them through a hundred battles. I won't lie to you. This is going to be the hardest thing we've ever done. We're marching into the mouth of hell and there's no guarantee we'll come back out. He took a deep breath, letting the weight of the moment settle on his shoulders. But this is bigger than us, bigger than the Federation even. If we don't stop the Korgrath here and now, there might not be a galaxy left to fight for. And when this is over, when the Federation sees what humanity is capable of, they'll damn well know that we're not just some primitive warmongers. We're the ones who do what needs to be done to keep the peace. Jack stepped forward, his scarred face set with determination. Ura, sir, we're with you no matter what. Mina nodded sharply. Those Korgrath bastards won't know what hit them. Pride surged through Nate's veins, hot and bright. These were his marines, his family. And come hell or high water, they'd see this through to the end. As the fleet mustered and the strike force boarded their stealth shuttle, Nate felt a strange calm settle over him. The nerves, the doubt, the fear. It all fell away, replaced by a crystal clarity of purpose. The Korgrath had sown the wind. Now it was time to reap the whirlwind, and may the gods have mercy on their souls, because the space marines sure as hell wouldn't. The stealth shuttle glided through the inky void of space, its matte black hull barely distinguishable against the starry backdrop. Inside, Nate and his team double-checked their gear, the soft clicks and clacks of weapons and armor, the only sound in the cramped compartment. Mina looked up from her wrist-mounted computer, her dark eyes glinting in the dim light, we're coming up on the drop zone. Korgrath's stronghold dead ahead. Nate nodded, his jaw set with grim determination. All right, Marines, you know the drill. Get in, find that artifact, and blast it to hell. And if any of those scaly bastards get in our way, show them why you don't mess with the UNSC. The shuttle shuddered as it hit the atmosphere, the hull groaning under the strain. Nate braced himself against the bulkhead, his mind racing through the countless hours of training and preparation that had led them to this moment. The hatch slid open with a hiss, revealing a landscape of twisted metal and pulsing energy. The Korgrath stronghold loomed before them, a jagged wound slashed into the surface of the planet. They hit the ground running, boots pounding against the rocky soil as they raced towards the entrance. The active camo suits shimmered and shifted, blending them seamlessly into the harsh terrain. At the base of the stronghold, Mina crouched beside a pulsing conduit, her fingers flying over the keys of her wrist computer. Give me a sec to hack their security. We should be able to slip in undetected. Nate scanned the perimeter, his rifle at the ready. The air was thick with the stench of sulfur and decay, and an eerie green light pulsed from deep within the structure. Got it! Mina hissed as a hidden door slid open with a groan. We're in! The team slipped inside, the darkness enveloping them like a shroud. The only sound was the soft tread of their boots and the hum of ancient machinery. But as they pressed deeper into the stronghold, a guttural roar echoed through the halls. The Korgrath were onto them. A hulking warrior lunged from the shadows, its razor-sharp claws slashing towards Nate's throat. He ducked and spun, his rifle barking as he pumped a burst of plasma into the creature's chest. More Korgrath poured into the corridor, their eyes blazing with bloodlust. Jack and Mina opened fire, the air crackling with the sizzle of energy bolts. Push forward, Nate bellowed. We've got to reach that artifact. They fought their way through the twisting labyrinth of the stronghold, the walls slick with blood and ichor. The Korgrath seemed to be everywhere, leaping from the shadows with a savagery that made Nate's skin crawl. At a massive blast door, Mina plugged into the control panel, her brow furrowed with concentration. This is some heavy-duty encryption. I need time to bypass it. Nate and Jack took up positions on either side of the door, their weapons hot and ready. 
The Korgrath closed in, their howls echoing off the metal walls. Wave after wave of warriors crashed against them, the marines' guns blazing in the gloom. Nate felt the sting of a claw across his cheek, the hot spray of blood blinding him for an instant. Almost there, Mina shouted, her voice barely audible over the din of battle. And then a roar that shook the very foundations of the stronghold. The massive form of Warlord Zoran stomped into view, his eyes burning with malevolent intelligence. Foolish humans, he growled. You dare to challenge the might of the Korgrath? Zoran raised a massive energy cannon, the barrel glowing with sickly green light. Nate saw Jack pivot, saw the determination etched into every line of his friend's face. Get that door open, Nate. I'll hold him off. Before Nate could protest, Jack charged forward, firing as he went. The bolt from Zoran's cannon caught him square in the chest, burning through his armor like tissue paper. Nate screamed, a raw primal sound that tore at his throat. He lunged at Zoran, his rifle forgotten, his fists slamming into the warlord's scaly hide. Behind him the blast door groaned open. Mina's hand was on his shoulder, pulling him back. We have to go, Nate, now! Nate staggered into the artifact chamber, his vision blurred with tears. The room pulsed with an eerie light, and at its centre, floating in a column of energy, was the artifact. It was like nothing he had ever seen, a jagged shard of obsidian that seemed to absorb the very light around it, and as Nate approached, the artifact began to speak, its voice slithering into his mind like a serpent. Ah, the mighty human warrior, it purred, you think you can stop me. I have seen the rise and fall of a thousand civilizations. The Korgrath are but pawns in my grand design. Images flashed through Nate's mind. Worlds burning, entire species enslaved. He saw the Galactic Federation crumble, saw Earth itself consumed by the artifact's insatiable hunger. No, Nate growled. I won't let you win. Humanity will stop you. The Federation will stop you. The artifact laughed, a sound that chilled Nate to his very core. You cannot stop the inevitable, human. The galaxy will be mine, and your pathetic species will be the first to fall. Nate raised his rifle, his finger tightening on the trigger. Behind him, Mina readied a demolition charge, her face grim with resolve. Zoran burst into the chamber, his soldiers at his back. The warlord's eyes widened as he saw the artifact, a look of rapturous devotion spreading across his reptilian features. The Eternal One blesses us with its presence, Zoran bellowed. Destroy the human filth, protect the artifact. The Korgrath surged forward, and Nate lost himself in the chaos of battle. His rifle bucked and kicked as he fired, the acrid scent of plasma filling his nostrils. Beside him, Mina lobbed the demo charge towards the artifact, the explosives detonating in a blinding flash of light. The shockwave slammed into Nate, sending him sprawling to the floor. Through the ringing in his ears, he heard the artifact scream, a sound of pure, unadulterated rage. The column of energy pulsed and flickered, the obsidian shard cracking under the strain. Nate dragged himself to his feet, his vision swimming. Zoran loomed over him. The warlord's cannon pointed directly at his heart. Die, human scum! Zoran snarled. Nate's rifle was gone, torn from his grasp in the explosion. He looked around desperately, his gaze falling on a jagged shard of metal, still glowing with the heat of the blast. He lunged forward, snatching up the improvised weapon and driving it deep into Zoran's eye socket. The warlord howled in agony, his cannon falling from nerveless claws. The artifact pulsed again, the cracks in its surface spreading like a spider's web, Nate could feel the malevolent entity straining against its prison, desperate to break free. He reached for another demo charge, armed it with shaking fingers. The Korgrath were all around him, their claws tearing at his armor, their jaws snapping at his flesh. Nate raised the charge high, a battle cry tearing from his throat, for the Federation, for Earth, for Jack. He hurled the explosive with the last of his strength, watched it arc through the air towards the pulsing heart of the artifact, and then the world dissolved in a maelstrom of fire and light, and Nate knew no more. Nate blinked, his eyes struggling to focus as the ringing in his ears subsided. 
The artifact chamber was a ruin of shattered stone and twisted metal. Scattered around him, the broken bodies of Korgrath warriors lay still, their lifeblood pooling on the cracked floor. Mina staggered to his side, her armor scorched and dented. Is it... is it over? Nate nodded, his voice raw. It's done, the artifact is destroyed. As if on cue, a rumble shook the stronghold. Beyond the shattered walls, Nate could hear the sounds of battle, the bark of Federation weapons, the guttural war cries of the Korgrath. But something had changed. The Korgrath's voices held a note of desperation, of fear. Nate limped towards the breach, Mina supporting him. Together they looked out upon a battlefield transformed. The Korgrath were in full retreat, their ranks shattered and directionless. Federation soldiers and space marines alike surged forward, pressing the advantage, driving the enemy back. It was a rout, a victory beyond anything Nate had dared to hope for. But as the adrenaline faded, the cost of that victory began to sink in. Nate saw the fallen, human and alien alike sprawled across the blood-soaked ground, and there, half buried beneath a mound of rubble, a familiar armor-clad arm, the hand still clutching a battered rifle. Jack! The name caught in Nate's throat, a sob threatening to tear its way free. Mina's grip on his arm tightened, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. He knew what he was doing, Nate. He bought us the time we needed. He saved us all. Nate could only nod, his grief too raw, too overwhelming for words. Around them the battle wound down, the last pockets of Korgrath resistance crumbling before the onslaught of the Allied forces. In the midst of the carnage, a lone figure strode towards them, Admiral Zora, her uniform torn and stained, her face etched with weariness and sorrow. Lieutenant Commander Sullivan, Corporal Khan. Zora's voice was heavy, weighted with emotion. The Galactic Federation owes you a debt it can never repay. Your actions today, the sacrifices of your team, you've saved countless lives. Nate straightened ignoring the pain that lanced through his battered body. We did what needed to be done, Admiral, but the cost... He trailed off, his gaze drifting back to the rubble that entombed his friend. Zora placed a hand on his shoulder, her touch gentle. I know. The price of war is always high, but thanks to you, to the courage and tenacity of humanity, the Korgrath threat is ended. The galaxy is safe. As the Admiral spoke... Medics and engineers swarmed the battlefield, tending to the wounded, assessing the damage. Nate watched them work, a sense of numbness settling over him. The mission was accomplished, but at what cost? In the days that followed, as the Galactic Federation began the long process of rebuilding, Nate found himself grappling with a new challenge. The leaders of the Federation, once wary of humanity's aggression, now looked upon the Space Marines with something akin to awe. Admiral Zora sought him out, her expression grave. The Council is impressed by your team's actions, Lieutenant Commander. They see the value of humanity's strength, your unwavering resolve in the face of adversity. Nate frowned, sensing a butt lurking in the Admiral's words. And? And they want humanity to take its place among the Galactic Federation, to lend your might to the defense of the galaxy as full members of our alliance. Nate felt a flicker of unease. I appreciate the offer, Admiral, but I'm not sure that's the right path forward. There are still those in the Federation who fear us, who see us as little more than violent savages, and to be honest, I can't say I blame them. Zora's eyes narrowed. What are you suggesting, Lieutenant Commander? Nate took a deep breath, choosing his words carefully. An alliance, Admiral, not assimilation. Let humanity stand beside the Federation as equals. We'll fight with you, share our strength and knowledge, but we maintain our autonomy, our identity. For a long moment, Zora was silent, her expression unreadable. Then slowly she nodded. I will present your proposal to the Council. It won't be an easy sell, but I think it's the right path forward. For all of us. Relief washed through Nate a weight lifting from his shoulders. He knew the road ahead would be long, the scars of war not easily healed. But for the first time, he allowed himself to hope. 
for a future where humanity and the Galactic Federation stood together, united against the darkness. As the Space Marines prepared to return to Earth, Nate found himself surrounded by a sea of alien faces, the survivors of the battle, the soldiers who had fought and bled alongside his team. Their expressions were a mix of gratitude, respect, and something else. Something Nate had never expected to see directed at a human. Admiration. A Thaxian warrior, his exoskeleton still bearing the scars of battle, stepped forward, his mandibles clicking in the alien equivalent of a smile. You fought well, human. You're kind. You are warriors indeed. Nate clasped the Thaxian's outstretched claw, a grin tugging at his lips. We're more than that, my friend. We're allies. And together there's nothing in this galaxy we can't face. As the transport ship lifted off, carrying the space marines back to the blue marble they called home, Nate felt a sense of pride, of accomplishment, swell within him. Humanity had taken its first steps onto the galactic stage, and though the path ahead was uncertain, one thing was clear. The universe would never be the same. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support me, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And for every comment that says, I liked the story, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.